today, as you can see, I have a lot of <laughs> makeups really dark. It's because I was trying to go for a night court theme. But if you see, I have uh, I have sparkles. Like I literally put sparkles all over my face because you know, shiny. But I don't know any rest of the theory. Shiny. <laughs> Anyways, today we're talking about Court of Wings and Ruin by Sarah J. Moss. Oh my gosh. Do, do you see my do you see my little like Farah tattoo? Fera? Do you see it? Anyways, Court of Wings and Ruins. Wings as in the Illyrian wings. And ruin has what it left my heart. My heart was left in ruins. I love this book. This is the third book to the Court of Rose series, and it's amazing. The books, in my favorite order, I would say A Court of Mr. Fury, A Court of Wings and Ruin, and then A Court of of Roses. This one, because it's the last book, it's always very more political than, like, relational. I love this book. I gave it a 9 out of 10. Maybe 4.5 out of 5, because there was a few things in it. And we'll get into that. Anyways, I just want to say subscribe to my channel if you're not yet subscribed. I talk about books and we do shenanigans and it's fun here. So hit that subscribe button and be updated on when I upload. And thank you. Okay, so let's start off with this book. So basically what we have to do is we realize Highburn's army is coming and we gotta rally something here. So we get all the High Lords and we're gonna get, talk to all the High Lords and we're gonna like We're gonna make an alliance and we're gonna hold hands and kumbaya and life will be great. We gather all the High Lords together and then Tamla does show up and oh my gosh I just felt so secondhand embarrassment for Feyre and Ryzen when Tamla just like literally just airing Feyre out in the open for everyone to hear and I'm just like Oh my god, talk about crazy ex-boyfriend. I'm like, what is going on? But then we find out Tamlin's actually not bad. He's actually working as a spy. And then you kind of, I kind of felt bad for Tamlin. Even though he was very, like, territorial and predator-like, I felt bad for him because I think he's a good guy. He just... He has a lot of baggage and he has a lot of stuff he needs to deal with before he can ever open yourself to love. And that's one thing I really appreciate about these books. Is I think sometimes in young adult fiction, and I'm not saying it's bad, but I think sometimes in young adult fiction we don't really focus on like the relationship, what it means to be in a relationship. We just say, here's a relationship. Like I'm guilty about it in my own book. You can't just like throw this relationship out because you think they're going to be cute together. And yeah, I get fuzzy feelings reading about it. Because everybody likes to hear the cutesy parts of romance, but I really like these books because they kind of show what it means to be in a relationship. If you work as a team, it really gives a good picture of what actual relationship looks like. Like, Rysand is Faye. You know the word Bay? I think it should just be Faye because he's Okay. So, we get to the battle. The battle is like, this battle is it's the last battle and we're like, they're not, we're not going to make it. Everybody's going to die. This is going to be huge slaughter. What are we going to do? We hear ships coming in and it's from Hebron, but then there's these other ships. Finds out. Feyre's father has been all no, I didn't even know he knew about well, I obviously he knew he knew about the Fey, but I didn't think he actually worked with the Fey like that. Turns out he's known that's what's been going on. He knew the queens were gonna betray him, so he found the lost Queen Vasa and rallied armies. It's like, whoa! And like I said, with Sarah J. Vasa's book, you you read like halfway through, you're like, this is good, this is good again. And then so, most books there's like one plot twist and you're like wow I didn't see that coming. It's Sarah J Maas's book it's like plot twist after plot twist after plot twist you're like how much more can I take? I mean I can't figure something was up since you know her father has been around and they kept mentioning it. I've noticed this about Sarah J Maas's writing that she doesn't just put things in there just put them in there. She definitely does not bring things up more than once just for the heck of it. Usually if she's bringing something up more than once it has some significance. Story. So when the characters kept saying oh father's out in the merchant things for a few months. He's been out doing merchant things for a few months. It kind of rang a bell something was gonna happen. I just I didn't know how. But then we get to the cauldron. Feyre puts a hand on the cauldron and the cauldron starts like speaking to her, wrapping her up. And Amran's like Nope, I ain't giving you the spell. And Faye was saying, oh my gosh, Amran has betrayed us. I'm thinking, oh my gosh, Amran has betrayed us. And I'm thinking, wouldn't Ryze know? Like, wouldn't Ryze know that that Amran would betray them? Because, like, he's lived with her for, like, 500 years. You'd think you'd know a person. i think, oh my gosh, Amran's going to betray him. But you kind of see why the author had this go in. Because that's how you got to find out everything else between her father dying. Like, the whole thing with Cassian. Let me see if I can find the book. Like, oh my gosh. Where is it? 
I should have really marked this. I was gonna, and I didn't. There is. And then Cassian tells Nessa, because Cassian is basically dying right now, because he can't use her again. Nessa does not know how to use her powers. Cassian tells her, I have no regrets in my life but this, that we did not have time, that I did not have time with you, Nessa. And I'm just like, I literally wrote in the book, no, 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 no. And then he goes on to say, I will find you again in the next world, the next life, and we will have that time. I promise. I'm just like, I'm done. I don't think my heart could take But then we find Elaine, kills the king and I'm just like whoa did not say I was coming and part of me wonders if she had a vision or something she's like I gotta go kill the king and part of me's like also Nessa and Lane were always very close the closest I think of all the sisters like Feyre I think was kind of just there a lot of times because she never really felt part of her sister's life and I think because all the times Nessa has protected and sheltered Elaine I think this was Elaine finally protecting and sheltering Nesta. These are literally my notes I'm just gonna read straight from my notes at this point because I find them kind of comical so this is the part where I said the father has not yet died yet and they're in like bargaining process where Nessa's like, I'll give you the power if you give me father. We also see a part where Rice turns that monsters and stuff. So this is kind of where we are at. And I literally wrote my notes, please tell me Rice doesn't die. And this is how she unleashes her power. She as in Feyre, unleashes her power upon the world. Right when you think you can't get any worse than nope, it crushes you. The king is always one step ahead of you. The king just killed his bargaining chip. Kept thinking her father would come back as a vampire, but that's the wrong book and movie. That's how I literally started my notes. Because I don't know, for some reason when they snap the neck, I thought the vampire diaries and I was like, oh, he can come back in the vampire. And I'm like, wait, this is the wrong thing. Uh, but no, I, we'll get to right something about Rise later. Yeah, so like I said, when Cassie said this thing, like, then when Nessa, though, covered her body over Cassie and like, if you're gonna take him, you're gonna take me too. For some reason, I kept thinking of that one song by the Chain Smokers. Yeah, the Chain Smokers. We go down, then we go down together. We go down, then we go down together. Literally through my head. <laughs> I should have known the sisters would come and play more because in the first book they're kind of just like background characters. The second book even they're more background characters. They don't come really full blow until the end and then this book. I really liked how the author wrapped this up because I felt like a lot of times her sisters were just there and I think sometimes that's how it is in a lot of books that there's characters that are just there but then she kind of brought them in. Here they are and I was like I'm so happy that because the story really if you think of it yes it's about Feyre as a fae and then meeting Ryan Stan and stuff like that but it's also also a story about sisterhood. You know this, Feyre gets much closer to her sisters at the end of the series than compared to the beginning of the series. Okay, let's let's talk about this part and I know everybody probably cried at this. I'm not a crier, but I had one single tear, one single tear just go down my face and it was like a gut punch and that was when Rise died. Like I kind of figured he might die because I was like, this, something's gonna happen, something's gonna happen. And I kind of expected he probably would come back to life. But I don't want to just assume. So like I said, Rise dies. Where? Let me get to the page because I know what page is. And then it says the mating bond. It wasn't there. It was gone because his own chest. It was not moving. And Rise was dead. I literally, I kid you, I get that. I got like this. Is this so sort of punched me in the gut? The pain was so. I felt the empathetic pain and I cried. I, you want to know what's really ironic and like kind of scary. Rise dies on page 666. Now, I don't know. Oh shoot, did I just get lipstick on my page? Ah, well that's annoying. And I was like, this book is evil. This book is a product of Satan when Rise died. Rise died, it was Satan. I, I was happy when he came back, but I was like, this is kind of unoriginal because that's kind of what happened to her. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like there's gonna be something wrong with him. I feel like no one just comes back. I know Feyre did, but it was kind of different because she was human and then Faye. But I feel like something's gonna come back because these are gonna be more books. Like I hate how the author wrote the Court and Thorns of Roses to continue in 2018. You're like, what am I supposed to do for all these months? So I feel like something's gonna happen. But then I also hear that the next books aren't might not even be in these perspectives of these characters. They'll be part of the other whole new characters, which I'm kind of. Uh, like you just went through a whole series of Pharaohs. I want to stay in Pharaoh's mind. I honestly thought Pharaoh was gonna get pregnant. Like I honestly thought it. Like I felt like there was like sign after sign, hint after hint in this book. And I was like, she's she's pregnant. She's gonna get pregnant. And then it did happen. I was like, what? No, no, no. There's an ending. I'm not reading here. But 
I want to talk about this one part also. Wow. So I'm at work and I'm reading this. And this is, it comes to part where Ryan is basically saying goodbye to everyone. I literally cried. Like all of you said, like I have so much writing on this page. I don't know if you can see it. But I really, this, but this part where he says to Feyre, I would have waited 500 more years for you. A thousand years. And if this was all the time we were allowed to have, the wait was worth it. I believe that everything happens exactly the way it had to. So I could find you. I I guess I'm reading this library. Some guy comes up to me, um, ma'am, can I please check out this book? Excuse me, but my characters, the fate of my characters rests in these pages and you have the audacity to ask me if you could check out a book? Have respect. Have respect. But oh my gosh, I was literally like, my heart. But it had a happy ending. Everybody lives happily ever after. I honestly think so. It's gonna happen with as There's gonna be some weird like triangle between Azrael and Elaine because Lucian likes Elaine because she's his mate. But Elaine doesn't feel that yet. But I have this thing Azrael and Elaine. Something's going on between them. I feel like something like fire. I feel like she's gonna have a kid. It has to happen. Like with the whole bone carver and then all those hints. It's gonna happen. I think Cassie and Ness, I think they're mates. I think, because there was a little, like, wasn't there, like, something in the book that said something like that? Like, oh, they think they were mates or something like that. Or, like, they just haven't, it's not that strong right now. I don't know. But I can't wait. I don't know what the next series is about. I'm hoping it's from Fair's perspective. I'm hoping it's with this cast. I hear everybody comes back. That's kind of also why I wasn't, didn't think Rise of Dead, because I kind of heard everybody comes back. And then Amber comes back and it's just, it's all a happy ending. Like you still get the uh, gut punch, but also yay, everybody's happy. I'm just, I'm, I kind of wish there was a little bit more to it than how it just ended. I felt like war's done and, but, but I loved it. It was so good. Anyways, thank you for watching. Please give me a big thumbs up. Tell me in the comments below what you thought of the book. Thank you for watching. Bye. Side point, I don't even know if this is focused or not, but you can see Talon really mature, especially at the end when Ryzen is dying and Feyre needed his power to bring him back to life and he's and she's like, I'll do anything. Honestly, I do anything. I honestly thought I was like, oh gosh, she's gonna go back to Spring Court and we're gonna start this all over again. But he's like, No, be happy. And I think that really showed maturity because to love and Ryzen known this when Pharaoh is Tamlin's is that to love somebody you also have to be willing to watch them let them you have to also be willing to let them go if that means that they'll be happy even if it's with someone else and that I think is just a huge thing and hard thing to do so the fact that Tamlin was considering Pharaoh's wanting Pharaoh to be happy kind of shows how he does love her and he wants what's best for her and I'm hoping he finds someone like I'm hoping we find me though we never know why he couldn't go in why Feyre could never go into his room why 